here with Thomas Dreadflame Sitch. Uh, Thomas, um, you've been with the company now two years? A little more than two years, almost two and a half actually. Tell us um, a little bit, some of the fans may already know this, but a few of the newer fans don't know. Tell us how you came involved with the Shadowing Project and about how you came to be here in Austin from uh, from uh, Irvine, California, right? Uh, Southern California, yeah, in the vicinity of Irvine. I worked in Irvine. No, I uh, managed to hook up with the guys from Wolfpack at E3 a couple years ago, I guess it was 2000. And I had been at the time working in medical research at the medical school at UCI and was looking to do something new to uh, explore some new venues as a big fan of the MMO uh, genre. Have you played any of their MMO games at that point? I had. Uh, I played UO for three years. Really? I, now that's something new for me. I didn't know that previously. Oh yeah, I got I got PK'd on several occasions. What, what, there what for, uh, server did you play on? I was Sonoma. Sonoma, which, okay. Which was unfortunate because it seemed like everybody else was on Baja or Chesapeake or whatever. But uh, yeah, and I was there for the glory and not so glorious days of, uh, of UO. And it, so you were you you were no stranger to MMOs. And what you were doing at the hospital was. You were doing research or programming research, correct? I was at the Institute for Brain Aging and Dementia, which uh, had uh, cr uh, collaborations with various hospitals and research institutions. It was a lot of multidisciplinary work, working with um, uh, clinical pathologists and cognitive scientists and computer engineers and whatnot. So it was uh, I did basically artificial intelligence stuff to help computers identify. Um, cells in tissue samples that were related to Alzheimer's disease. So, and from there you moved on to uh, you wanted to get into gaming. Obviously, you were a gamer yourself. So, um, E3 2000, correct? Yes. That's when the big meeting happened. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, I was just a. Uh, I Hold had on just a second. What happened here? All right. Okay, so it was E3 2000. Tell us a little bit about that. It was E3 2000, so you, you have to remember this is back in the Godlot days, and it was kind of things were kind of loose and fast, and uh, <laughs> it was a very interesting introduction to the to the the world of video game devs, since you know, I was familiar with games, but not really the culture of the people who make them. Right. And so I was I had made contact with some friends from Wolfpack and from Bioware, and we'd been chatting, and I had had the goal that day to get in and to see two games, Shadowbane and Neverwinter Nights, both of which I was very enthusiastic about. And having seen both, there was a, you know, one of those uh, awful dev luncheons hosted by Sony or something that was going to go on. A big crowd of people were milling around in the main hall, and somebody pointed me out to Joseph Arcane Hall and said, hey, Joseph, programmer. Uh, at that time, Wolfpack was shopping for, for programmers. and. Lo and behold, a couple weeks later, I fly out to Austin, and a couple weeks after that, I uh, uh, threw, threw my stuff in my car and crossed the Southwest. So it was. Uh, how, how did you know about the name of Dreadblame? Uh, this is something I need to ask more about. But Dreadblame goes back a long ways. He was uh, uh, a, a major character in a video game I designed when I was in high school. I actually got a bunch of high school kids together, and we were going to form a company. <laughs> Um, and Dreadflame sort of just survived in my in my sketching and in my fiction. I was involved in a, a online guild that was mainly just a writing guild for several years, and that was my main alter ego uh, with the Coalition of Darkness. And so you were a bad guy, huh? He was one of those those anti heroes, you know, good guy uh, turned bad guy, bad guy turned good guy. You couldn't gotcha. tell which way he went. Um, he was in the fiction of one of the stories. He was a character who was designed to throw the balance between good and evil, you know, and uh, the concept, kind of like the jester in um, Arthur C. Clarke's The City and the Stars, but anyhow, that's all neither here nor there. So you came on to Wolfpack, and um, you were, there were several programmers, but you were one of the, I guess, uh, the first of a brand new team that was coming in to really, when this project was taking off, to become something much bigger than any of us had really thought it would be. It was just changing from a couple guys in a very small office to a real team. I was the 13th uh, well, member of the team. Remember. Yeah, and I remember some fans uh, <laughs> went and edited The Last Supper. That's how I'll never ever forget that number. That's right. I remember that picture as well. <laughs> the Last Supper. Uh, what, what were some of the first, what were your first projects? I mean, after you obviously moved in to, moved to Austin and came to work on, um, what did the founders sit you down and, and say, Todd, I mean, Thomas, what we, here's what we need you to work on? Well, what they hooked me on was I, I came out for my interview. We talked uh, online culture and the MMOs that stood and where we saw them going and where we saw Shadowbane fitting in that picture. And I had been a big enthusiast of the online housing or the fiasco thereof in Ultima Online. Same here. And having been involved in, in very 
culture-rich guilds in my, in my role-playing groups and whatnot online, I had a, a great interest in the communities that people build in the game. So I had basically been promised to, to go into this uh, player housing and to take it beyond that to an RTS system and to do the guild design and some of the mobile AI. And amazingly enough, I ended up doing all of that, um, although a lot of the AI credit also goes to uh, my co-conspirator Ice when he came on board. Right. Now, that, that's interesting because um, Shadowbane for an MMO game that was introducing real-time strategy elements to the game, this was pretty much an innovation for the genre. So, I mean, you coming in from the UO experience, um, what were your thoughts on including an RTS side to Shadowbane's design, and, and, and what about that? got you motivated and passionate? Well, it was interesting because I really wasn't super familiar with RTS at the time. I have since become a big fan both out of necessity and uh, just doesn't take much exposure to a game like Warcraft to right. become an aficionado. But we really didn't think of it in terms of, let's look at an RTS game and copy it. We looked at it in terms of kind of pie in the sky, right? We want player strongholds. We want something beyond player housing. We want people to have dungeons and castles and be the, you know, because you know, not everybody wants a cabin in the woods. Some people want, you know, kudos well in the center of town or, sure. you know, the, the dark castle on the mountain. And, you know, we want to give people that. And that's the driving goal there really was to give people something of value that they called their own inside the game. I mean, sure. that, was, that was the endearing thing in UO is once you built this house and decorated it and done all this stuff, it, that was your place. That was that's what kept you coming back, you know, and, and that in addition to your guild, you had a really strong tie to the game. And we wanted that in Shadowbane as well, but within the context and without some of the limitations that our predecessors had uh, had run into. Right. So from a just from a programming standpoint, an AI standpoint, I mean you come obviously from a background that understands community aspects of an MMO. And so, looking at your moving in, Todd says, and the founders say, okay, Thomas, we want you to start working on strongholds, working on programming a system that we can we can now merge all these elements in together. Um, what took you off from thinking, okay, not just real-time strategy, not just artificial intelligence, but um, ways for communities and societies to interact with each other? Well, the first thing that had occurred to me is uh, that really the existing approach to guilds have been insufficient because the way guilds are run is drastically different among player groups. I'd seen this in UO, I'd seen this uh, online, I'd seen it. My brother belonged to a guild called the Jedi Praxium and I, I studied how they worked. And we really wanted to be able to give people a diverse set of tools for organizing their community. It was something that they were going to build and they were going to maintain. We wanted something more than, you know, you drop a guild stone and you're a guild, or you put a right. petition in and you become a guild. Right. And we, wanted, we wanted them to be able to maintain their membership, you know, effectively, and, and to have the, the apparatus for doing that. So that started with, obviously, when right after you came on board is when we saw um, the heraldry system, where you, you chose a guild and a name, and, and you had a symbol associated with that. Um, tell us a little more about how the, how the guild systems evolved. Well, it... We, we wanted to have a set of governments, and that was going to largely dictate how you would get rid of and or maintain your guild, uh, guild master. We wanted that we had pretty some pretty ambitious ideas for the heraldry, um, which unfortunately we really never quite got to. Although, frankly, the uh, the crests as they stand with the the five things that you spin and all is are pretty nice. I mean, I'm happy with them. Uh, and the rest pretty much took off from there. You know, we, a lot of it, there was kind of um, the, the Bible or Koran of, of Guild and City stuff had been put together by uh, Warden and Scorn, and that was really my jump off point, first for the guilds and then for the city system. And a lot of it grew from there. I was able to fit in a lot of side projects, uh, that uh, many of which really complemented the system, such as the killed on site list, how it was managed with crests and the friends lists and so forth. But the foundation of that was from the the dark and brilliant recesses of uh, of founders and, and scorns.